How you doing, casters? My name is Kevin Cote, uh, Research and Development Director of MetaZoo Games, with a um, company who I love a lot because I work with them. <laughs> and I am joined here by my lovely acquaintance, Herman Herrera, first place winner of the New Year's tournament. Herman, thank you for being here. Appreciate you. I appreciate y'all. I'm excited to be here. That was a long tournament, but a whole lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. Uh, I. I think it was like 13 hours total uh, for most people who are staying the whole time. If you're watching, that's a long tournament, you know? It is. Yeah. So long. For sure. But well <laughs> well worth it. That's what that's, some, that's where the magic happens, right? Yes. So, for sure. Now, uh, disclaimer, I've actually met Herman a few times in person, actually. And to be honest, lovely guy to meet. Uh, he was in uh, Houston Collecticon, correct? Yep. And, yep. uh... Pro play support Dallas. So you are quite the experienced MetaZoo player at this point in time. Yeah, it was kind of funny to think about it like that. I was only six months years old, but <laughs> somehow <laughs> I am experienced in that short period of time. Right. Well, again, glad to have you. Uh, let's start it off. What made you get into MetaZoo out of all games? Well, so um, I had a friend of mine that went to Rocky Mountain Collectibles. So Russ got to, he knows Ellis. So Ellis put all that on the owner of Rocky Mountain Collectibles, and then he brought the cards back. So I was interested in just like how the cards looking. It was crazy, all the hype that I saw when I looked into it. So I, I bought cards myself because I was interested in making my own deck at that point. And it just kept exploding from there. And so with just like the interactions of the card, it reminded me of several games. And I was super curious to see how fourth wall effects were going to work in a competitive environment. Because I'm naturally a competitive person, so I want to try to beat other people. Right, same, same here, man. Uh, were were you um, you happy with the way fourth walls were implemented in competitive play? I don't think y'all could have done any better with the fourth wall effects. <laughs> the way we limited it, because I was telling everybody if they don't limit how you can do these effects, it's going to be the shortest tournament in the history of TCG because everybody was going to play Killer Clown with a thousand balloons around the event. Right, everyone always. <laughs> brings up killer clown in person uh, since yeah. you know in denver and texas i go like they yeah. just bring it up and that card is it's an awesome card in, in casual play for sure yeah. overall but that's awesome right what kind of uh preparation did you do i mean this was a, a big tournament like dozens of people signing up right you know what kind of you know did you do any uh, play testing of some sorts for the event so uh i do do uh play testing i don't get to do live very much because uh, at the same time we're the locals are going around me. I'm in Round Rock, Austin area. I also play poker full time. So it conflicts my poker schedule. But y'all have already heard, most of y'all will, of Logan Drake, Mr. Run It Up Collectibles. Uh, he got into it at uh, the tournament that I had Houston Collecticon after he was watching me play. And we uh, play a lot. Also, a couple of other my friends that I've gotten into it, or I've sold cards to personally, and they're playing amongst themselves. We uh, share ideas. So for this particular tournament, I more lean back on my prior play testing and just uh, viewing some of like Caster Society videos. The only reason I knew about ice because uh, in this tournament was the first time I actually played ice against it. Interesting, right? So yeah. that was your first time playing Frost with uh, your Frogman deck, correct? Well, Frost period. Frost period. That's wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and that's kind of interesting, right? This tournament we saw a lot of ore types, right? A lot of yeah. ore types, um, and you know. I, I think from from a fan point of view, most people didn't expect Frost to make top eight just off prior experience, right? But people being proved wrong <laughs> in that tournament, right? Yes. For sure. Well, that's what the big thing about like people like Caster Society just randomly putting on their uh, testing or their different um, ways of using Terra to influence a format for their own tournament needs. You get to see the different card interactions that are just a little bit more streamlined people actually are trying to win these bigger events that are maybe local to them and travel a little bit further outside of them so that I, i'm very uh, happy to see people just kind of like getting away from quets at best right. Well, right. yeah yeah very interesting well again we love the we love what fans are doing and communities doing with with terra mm -hmm. and uh custom rules it's really awesome mm -hmm. and um as a designer of the game i love seeing that work being done very creative mm -hmm. 
Um, so I originally saw you. You were a Quetz player, right? You were a, a quad Quetz yeah. player for a while. I saw you in pro, in pro pay support playing at quad Quetz, making top eight, by the way, right? Um, mm -hmm. But then yeah. you switched it up. You went, you know, the dark side. You went to water. This completely opposite of lightning. Uh, what made you switch over to this uh, Loveland Frogman lockdown style deck? Well, it wasn't necessarily that I didn't want to play Quetz. It was more of uh, the table for the TTS. I didn't feel as prepared as I wanted to be. And there were certain cards that I couldn't use for my side deck. That would, I would have had to side deck against Frog for sure. Like a Disruption, I couldn't put that in my extra deck, my side deck. And it wouldn't grab or anything with me. And I, uh, the way I play Tusk is I'll play against decks to make the deck I'm working on break itself. To get to the worst possible line that you can find, the worst draws, everything. Just so I can reverse engineer it and see where I need to have my hands, when I need to mulligan what cards aren't good, and I can switch those out to my sideboard and have a, a strategy. And I will constantly be looking and rereading the, my rule books all the time to make sure I understand the traits, the interactions, just to feel comfortable and like calm, I guess. Like, not as much can surprise me. Exactly, right. And, you know, MetaZoo... Um... It, it, there's a lot of depth to the game, right? Not only knowing the traits, but how to best get around them, right? And it seems like you were able to um, use your knowledge extensively getting to the top eight, right? And just winning the tournament. So yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I, it was very helpful being able to play on the other side of water. I feel like I understand water a lot better because I play against it so much that I know how to beat it with my deck. To where it is on the other side, I know how that deck should come at me and where the little plays that I make differently from other people will cause them to win or lose the game. Right. Seems like um, playing more aura types made you better at other aura types. Yeah, so, absolutely. Fantastic. I came from a Yu-Gi-Oh background to where I played with the people that were much better than me. The closest person I played to at the time was the Philly Luna, and he eventually became the first four-time champion. So, and that's where we developed the gauntlet style of playing. Was, okay, you think you have the deck. Well, you're going to run through every deck. <laughs> that's awesome. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, what do you think makes you unique as a player and, or just, you know, as a deck builder as a whole? Um, I am more of a deck improver than an actual deck builder. If I can see a core of something that looks synergetic, I'll, I can find like the little inconsistencies to where I want to get rid of. Like there's sometimes there's some clogginess that you'll find that doesn't necessarily mean that every time you draw this card, it's going to immediately help or improve your hand. So if I find it, it's outside of a range that I want to see with the card, it's going to get cut or at least reduced in numbers. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So you like going big and then you, you kind of like a sculptor right a marble sculptor you go big mm -hmm. you refine cut here and there and then that's my finished piece interesting yeah yeah so it's not but kind of like an artist i never feel like the deck is done so every right. time you see a similar deck list of mine it's not gonna be the same because there will always be external factors affecting the game that will make me continually tweak the deck to make it be the best tool that i need right exactly right and that's how you know, I mean, it seems to be based off of talking to people, you know, deck builders never stop, right? You just keep going, keep continuing mm -hmm. and changing, right, to the environment. Uh, what mechanics or cards do you enjoy the most? Um, I like cards that, um, let's see, mechanic-wise, you, you got to love uh, anything that changes how the game normally flows. So fleet. I love that you're able to come in and it's going to attack. That's a naturally aggressive deck. So that's why I was drawn to catch, first of all, because that means I didn't need a second card to make my card run. Right. It comes in, it hits hard and decently. Well, but like, y'all have made the card very balanced. So the first thing I tell people, if you think the card is broken, you're probably reading it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it just, I encourage people to ask questions to y'all through Discord, just like I still do. Yeah. And uh, so that's what I enjoy. I enjoy, um, Things that uh, lightning in a bottle, favorite card. <laughs> my favorite card. I specific the deck list that I got from my friends for the water deck. I switched one card because it wasn't running five lightning in the bottles. 
and, and you saw the out the result <laughs> the sun death four lightning and bottles and yeah. there you go <laughs> that's perfect yeah oh that is a lighting the bottle that's that's your card <laughs> absolutely fantastic All right um and then you know lastly what are your future plans um into metazoo just as all um well I'll def- of course i'll be uh, going to more events um I'm currently working with a new company with uh, Logan. We're both be sponsored by Obnoxious Nine Games, and we'll be at uh, for at least for the next six months. So we'll be going around to different MetaZoo events. Past that, um, I'd like to work with people to do more online and offline tournaments. Just kind to, of you know help MetaZoo spread on its own, and kind of like get people out of the um, this is only a collector's game and more of this is an enjoyable game that you can play with your friends and the community itself is a really great community that's kind of an oddity in the TCG world because it's the people that I play with are always having fun. There's very little negativity surrounding it and it, it, it's young enough to where we can keep it that way. And that's what I want and that's uh, what I know Logan wants is to run it up collectibles is just to continue spreading that positive vibes and just keeping it friend, fun, family friendly, and just spreading it out because it's, it's a lot of fun. I love it. And, you know, I'm seeing it a lot. You know, the players, not only are they having fun, they're friendly, they want to teach the game, want to spread the game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's awesome <laughs> as a whole. And it's the kind of game that um, I wanted when I saw MetaZoo and the kind of game that I want to keep building when I design cards mm-hmm. and um, mechanics and the like. So, um, awesome. Very awesome. Well, Herman, uh, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate the interview. Uh, congrats again on first place, and I'm really excited to see where you go in the future. You know, I can see you being top, you know, like a super big player, you know, just well known player, like five years now, ten years from now, you know, thinking long term, right? And people will look back at that game last weekend and they're going to think, wow, what a legendary match, what a legendary player, right? So it be awesome. Well, I definitely want it to last 5, 10, 20 years down the road. I think it'll be great as well. Hopefully by then I'll be helping y'all around just running your new tournament. We'll, do, we'll see what comes up in the future. I want to see more teams grow and play face off against each other. You can see just like some other people come in with their own creative deck building skills and we'll pit teams against teams. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, exactly. And we'll see in the future what happens with that. But Again, thank you so much, Sherman, uh, and thank you. Thank you for watching.